in terms of just looking at the potential difference an individual can make, I think it's just worthwhile noting um, Zelensky, you know, after the uh, NATO uh, summit, uh, has a phone call, a long phone call, apparently, uh, with uh, what I'll call tongue in cheek, uh, the future president, Donald Trump. And uh, Zelensky says that it was a very positive uh, phone call. Um, but um, I'm not the only person pointing it out. Um, uh, I'm getting this directly uh, from uh, journalists, uh, that in terms of his address to the Ukrainian nation, uh, as far as I know, um, Zelensky for the first time has talked about negotiations uh, with Russia uh, before um, Russian troops, Russian forces have withdrawn um, from uh, Ukrainian soil. So there's talk from Zelensky of uh, the next equivalent of the um, uh, Swiss peace conference uh, that they put on with not inviting uh, Russia, the next one, uh, there would be an invite uh, uh, to Russia. So I would argue, you know, that um, clearly Trump would run things uh, differently uh, to Biden. And in spite of statements from Lamy and Keir Starmer, that they will stay with Ukraine for as long as it takes, a Joe Biden phrase, if and when perhaps uh, you get uh, Trump back in the White House, that will change. But that does not mean uh, that we should uh, view Trump as the peace candidate, that it's automatically, you know, um, um, you know, sensibleness and diplomacy that suddenly breaks out. It takes two to tango. And uh, it takes both sides uh, to accept a deal. Um, so it's up to Vladimir Putin uh, to look what is on offer. You know, maybe some deal over uh, the Crimea, maybe some deal involving joint sovereignty. Who knows? In the Donbass, we just don't know. Maybe language rights of uh, Russian speakers, again, we don't know. But also, we should be aware uh, that in spite of his. Um, clear margin of victory in the um, first um, in his first presidential victory um, you know Zelensky uh, I would argue um, is certainly vulnerable to forces on the right and we shouldn't discount the possibility uh, that if Zelensky is going in for negotiations maybe he's pushed in uh, to negotiations uh, with Russia there is the possibility of forces to the right accusing him, for example, of being a national traitor, of um, selling out um, sacred uh, Ukrainian uh, interest to the Russian beast or some other uh, such phraseology. In other words, what I'm thinking of uh, is the likes of uh, the Azov Brigade, Azov Battalion, uh, the right sector uh, and other such uh, uh, forces. We just don't know. All I would say is that the statements coming from Lamy, the statements coming from Starmer should be treated with a pinch of salt. Uh, they will simply follow what the United States tells them to do. Uh, and if it's, uh, if it's Biden, they will echo Biden. Uh, and if it's Trump, they will echo uh, Trump. Um, Britain doesn't have an independent uh, foreign policy. And basically the same will go for Germany, the same will go for France. Um, and it looks like Italy uh, uh, too. So yeah, um, individuals do make a difference, um, but not a fundamental uh, uh, difference. And I'll just add a couple of points here uh, that of course the main strategic aim of the United States, and from what I can gather, this unites both the Democrats and the Republicans, isn't simply doing down Russia. Uh, the main aim is China. Uh, China represents a full spectrum strategic challenge uh, to the United States. And it's clear uh, that both uh, the main parties in the United States are determined uh, to stop uh, the rise uh, of China. Uh, in terms of uh, Russia, if anything, it, it's a side um, issue. That's certainly uh, my take on um, um, Trump's uh, approach. Uh, to this question. 
And just final one final note um, on um, Ukraine. Um, just note, um, last time I think I wrote um, on the Ukraine war, I, I didn't. I did uh, comment on the little enclave that um, Ukrainian forces had managed uh, managed to gain on the um, eastern side of the Dnieper. Remember, their forces withdrew. Um, over this huge uh, river, they abandoned uh, the city that they'd uh, captured. Uh, they pulled out in good order, and Ukrainian forces captured three uh, villages. And I just re recently read a report on that, um, that uh, there's no way uh, that um, it is going to be expanded. Uh, Ukrainian troops reportedly say that it was a suicide mission getting there. Uh, you know, they have crossed by night, um, loads of them get killed, uh, they can't uh, evacuate, uh, they're wounded, they're dying, um, they face 120,000 Russian troops, um, and it looks like at the moment at least uh, the Russians are quite uh, happy with them being there so they can pick them off. In other words, what I'm arguing is sort of what I've been arguing really since the Russian failure uh, to capture Kiev. And that is what we're dealing with here is a war of attrition, a war where village fall here, a village falls there, but fundamentally uh, nothing changes. And so although I read in, um, uh, you know, in the SWP and in the um, latest commentary by um, the SWP sort of intellectual leader, Alex Linnaeus, the proxy war that's being conducted by uh, NATO isn't going well. I have to say uh, that if I was in NATO high command, if I was in Washington, if I was in, you know, the Pentagon, I would be looking at what's going on in Ukraine quite contentedly. Uh, not one, you know, U.S. soldier, not one German soldier, not one British soldier is being killed. Russia is bogged down in a war that it cannot win. It's spending a fortune um, um, on and is losing thousands uh, of uh, men and uh, tons of equipment. I mean, tell me why things are going badly. Uh, for for NATO, does it seriously think uh, that Ukraine uh, is going to push back uh, the Russian army all the way to the borders of uh, the Russian Federation? I think it's highly unlikely, not least uh, with the lines of uh, trenches and defences uh, that the uh, uh, Russian uh, high command have put in place along the entire front line and along the entire border, including uh, in uh, Crimea. Um, so I think this is, yes, a war of attrition. Uh, and what will decide this war is um, high politics. What happens in Washington? What happens in Moscow? Perhaps a coup attempt uh, in Kiev, uh, but it's unlikely to be decided uh, on the front line uh, with the poor uh, guys who are just uh, dying day by day by day.